Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy, and we're two Tenderfoot tourists. Welcome to episode 91, the one about first cruise eye openers. Okay, everyone, we're back from a cruise to Cozumel. Right, it was our first cruise. We were so excited about it and a little nervous because we both have some mild <laughs> water issues. Water issues. I'll yeah. say mild for me. I'll say not so mild for Steve. <laughs> no, it's borderline <laughs> panic in some in some cases, yes. And um, a little bit of nerves over being on a big ship out in the ocean. Mm-hmm. But we went and we, we did have a good time and we're going to tell you about the pluses the mm-hmm. minuses, and the things we would have done differently. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing is maybe make you look forward to a your first-time cruise. Right. No matter what we talk about on this podcast today, we aren't advising anyone not to take a cruise or anyone to take a cruise. We're hopefully giving you information that will help you decide if the cruising is for you. Correct. The cruising. If cruising, cruising is for you. <laughs> <laughs> if the cruising is good for you. Okay, so where do you want to start, hon? Well, I'd like to say, first of all, I had no idea really what to expect. You you study the heck out of everything. Mm-hmm. And I just, yeah, go ahead and do that, Steve. <laughs> well, I like the surprise of it all. Well, okay, I still had surprises, even though I learned as much as I possibly could. Well, let's just start with how it looked when we first got there before we ever went to the ship. Oh. It's huge. It is gigantic. Okay, so we stayed in Galveston, and the hotel that in which we stayed at, if you go around the corner and look down the, the street, you see the, the... The side of a huge, gigantic ship. The thing is twice <laughs> the size of any of the buildings that we were staying at or around us. It was a crazy sight to be coming down this street and look way down the blocks. Mm-hmm. Not block, but blocks. Blocks, <laughs> And yeah. there's this huge ship. It looked like you could just drive into the side of the ship. Right. It was incredible to see from that standpoint. So with that being said, uh, the port in which we we left out of, which is Galveston, um, the Galveston for the Royal Caribbean, it's it's um, it's bare bones. Wouldn't you call it bare bones? Uh, yeah, I would definitely and say that. It's, it's not little, fancy looking. It's not fancy at all. In fact, um, the, the thing is... It's is, rough because it's industrial, so it... <laughs> It's very industrial. Yes. Very industrial. Which, by the way, we were totally in awe of also. It was amazing. Which, by the way, just to give everybody a heads up, we will do a separate episode of just our time in Galveston. I think it's worthy of one episode. Oh, yeah. We've got enough to talk about, Um, definitely. So look forward to getting that episode in the very near future. So um, so we get up there. We actually didn't do too bad, you know, getting to one point. Oh, you mean getting from our parking to the ship itself? I mean, there was was some confusion, but it was easily remedied by just simply asking questions. That's right. You know, you'll really, really help your yourself by just saying, I'm new. I've never done this. They love you. Yeah. They love new cruisers. Yeah. Um, the guy that was driving us from our car to the actual port, mm-hmm. he loved having new cruisers. Yes. And we had no idea what to expect. We had been told we were on a, mo- a small ship. Right. And to us, it was huge antic. <laughs> yeah. Which later on, you're going to find out in this podcast, we were not, ne- we, were- oh, we were such bulls. But anyway, <laughs> um, literally, I mean, he brought us almost to the door. Yeah. We just had to walk across to right. um, a couple of lanes of traffic that are up there dropping people off. And I mean, it was very simple. And we go in and just had to have a seat for a little while until it was time. It was, uh, the process for us was not difficult at all. I mean, it was actually very simple. I mean. Yeah, we were scared. So we got there like mega early. Yeah, we did. (laughs) Earlier than any of our friends. (laughs) But when we finally got an up close personal view of the ship and the condition that it was in, and remind you, people who are listening, this ship was built in 97, I think it was, 95. It's a very old ship. It's a very, and you're talking about sending this boat or ship, I'm sorry, you send this ship out on the ocean salty water it really plays havoc on any kind of metals you put in there i started to say salt does not like metal no it does not it really breaks it down and causes it to rust which is one of the things that we were honestly shocked about is how much rust was on the exterior of this boat right um the upkeep didn't seem like there was a lot of work put into that now that being said I don't know what it's like to take care of a ship. No, no. <laughs> and like we said, it was an older ship. It was. Um, does, that, does that mean it was ugly to look at? No, it was an amazing ship. It was an amazing ship. One of the things that was interesting or noteworthy or worthy of repeating is the fact the thing was mostly glass. 
had right. lots of windows everywhere. It was gorgeous. You could see from I mean, all over and anywhere in the ship you could see out. Right. It was pretty incredible, actually. And we talked to friends that have done cruising on other vessels, and they said that's uncommon. The newer ones, the bigger ones, tend to not have nearly as much glass in them. No, exactly. And uh, so, I mean... So that was a perk for me. It it was a perk for both of us, for sure. Because you know how we are. We like to have the windows open. We like light sunlight coming in. Um, the fact that no matter where you were in the ship, you could have a view of the ocean. It was incredible. I, it was I, really, really nice. I was nice. so happy with the the ship overall when it came to its appearance. Mm-hmm. Now, um, we, we talked about the appearance of the ship overall, the exterior. The interior, however, you can tell that it has been, it's been kept clean. Right. right. Um, now they're, they're, they're pretty p- anal about the cleanliness. Yeah. Did you notice the signs in the bathrooms? What signs? I'm t- well, first of all. They have sanitized stations all over the place. They did. And they expect you to use them. They're not just saying, well, just in case. They they push for you to use them. And in fact, they'll even walk around with a little squirting Outside dog. of the restaurants, they yeah. squirt sanitizer in your hand as you go in. Yep. They're really paranoid making sure that you are not going to spread, what is it? So, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's a specific a flu. flu. Yeah. But, um, influenza. Yes, we'll just say influenza. Um but they're really paranoid about that in a good way. I kind of thought it was a good thing. Mm-hmm. And in the bathrooms, though, there are signs up in the bathrooms that say, please take oh, a yeah. paper towel, use it to turn off the nozzles, mm-hmm. and to open the door and to discard it in the trash. Yep. So they – I've never – well, we've done that for years. Yeah. But I've never been told to do that. <laughs> no, never. So I was kind of impressed with that. As far as them keeping the place clean, mm-hmm. I was really impressed. It was very impressive. Um, now, e- even our room and our room attendant would did a really good job at keeping everything all yeah, together. Yeah, Alistair. He was so nice. He was. And we'll talk about him later on in the podcast. Um, I think he deserves a shout-out. Um, also, the condition of the ship, uh, the the uh, the amenities that are available to you as far as mm-hmm. sitting, um, the places of quiet places I enjoyed, like the Viking Lounge up oh, on the 11th floor. Cool. Yeah, the 11th deck. 11th deck. Yes. The neat thing about the Viking Lounge was it was quiet. Right. That that was unusual because on the ship, most areas are very busy mm-hmm. and therefore loud. And the Viking Lounge is the 11th deck, which is the highest deck you can get onto. Right. And it had this Glass like, all the way around almost. All the way around it, you almost, I mean, except for like maybe. The back flat side. Yeah. Like 30 feet, 20 feet of it is just, I mean, all the rest of it is just glass. Yeah, it's an incredible view. Um, and uh, we loved it up there. We would go up there and we have. Conversations with the Nelsons who were yes. in there on the podcast with us, and uh, also with um, T N Brian. T N Brian, they were uh, relatives of yeah, people another we know. couple that were with us, and um, our good friends Sean and Jen, of course, were there, and then the girls. Then we the didn't girls. talk to the girls as much; they had no, their own things going no. on. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the overall. The longer we were there, we we started to figure out just how small the ship was. It really was. It was small compared to what we thought. When we got on, we thought it was just tremendously large. Mm -hmm. But um, once we were on for a little while, we started getting the hang of where things were at. I quit getting turned around trying to go to my cabin um, when I started recognizing pictures. Yeah, that was That helps a lot. Right. But – oh, and that's something else that was actually very helpful. They had – uh, what would you touch screen maps? Yes, that you could yeah. look at beside the elevators, which was really smart. I yeah, like that idea because you come out of the elevator or up the stairs, which were right across from the elevators, and you have these big touch screen things like you were talking about, and you could look up any venue you want. You could look up like events and the activities that are going on at the time. It's got a schedule up or there. medical if you needed medical for yeah, some reason. Exactly. Um, so it was really on the most part intuitive because all you have to do is like look under shops and I want a t-shirt. So you go to the shop and, and then you said map it and it'll tell you how to get to it. Right. It'd show you on a diagram of the ship mm-hmm. and it would give you the written out directions. Right. We need to talk about our actual stateroom, right? Yeah, our actually state our our uh, stateroom, we got a um, a window outside exterior, say. Is right. it exterior? Is that what we Yeah, call? it would be an exterior window, right? Yeah, it'd be I a, don't know. Exterior room. Exterior view. That too. We got one with a win- we got a, a r- cabin with a view. Right. And I mean the the window was really nice. I liked having it. 
I could I do without a window at all and be just in the dark <laughs> cabin? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I still don't know. We didn't go into Justin Wendy's like we planned. No, we but didn't. I I really like that window. Yeah, I did too. Um, we had a nice clear view of the ocean below, and it, you can see the white wave going by as right. it was turning it up, and and it was so relaxing. I love waking up in the morning and looking out the window and see nothing but blue ocean, blue skies. Uh, in some cases, even sunrise. It was so beautiful. So uh, it, it was just it was uh, so relaxing. Um, Staying in those staterooms is kind of like being in an RV. You know what? I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Space-wise, it's about as wide. Yeah. Length-wise, it's about as long. And I don't mean a gigantic RV. I mean one for two people. Right. Um, it, it's not huge. There's no kitchen table set up in there. No. Um, but I personally didn't mind it. I liked it. I thought it was fine. The worst part I thought we had was the shower is very tiny and we're fat so that's not easy (laughs) but i mean it was doable and the water pressure was great so i can't complain because i have so much thick hair that water pressure is my best friend Mm -hmm. so i mean i liked the cabin and i could live with that right what was your opinion of the cabin my opinion of was that everything that i researched it led me to believe that the cabin was much larger than what i expected it to be not by much more but i figured it would have a little bit more room on either side um the i don't know my expectations weren't like super like astronomically high but my expectations were were a little higher a little bit higher and the bathroom was um Compact. It was really, really compact. If okay, I, I'm going to tell on myself because I find it kind of funny, and mm-hmm. I found it funny from the moment I got in there. I don't get it why they put toilets, like, literally up against the wall. People aren't that little unless they're, like, 10 years old. Yeah. So I found myself sitting sideways. <laughs> yeah. Not completely, but a ways sideways just to, to make sure that... I kept I on having to move the shower curtain away from the toilet. That was driving me. See, the shower me. curtain didn't get me. It was the towels. Oh, my gosh. Because if you were sitting correctly on the toilet, your arm was up against the bathroom towels. So, see, it's a little tight in the bathroom. Just a little bit. Especially. But we started adjusting. I got to where when I would walk in and knew I was going to the bathroom, I would shove the towels forward, and then they didn't touch whoever right. was on the toilet. And that right. that was helpful. But, yeah, it, it was tight, like, a, like in a camper or right. RV. And it was very clean, though. Yeah, I was going to say the 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 amenities and and the furniture and everything. You can tell that it is it was being maintained. It wasn't being neglected in any shape or form. Mm-mm. You can tell it was clean. Um, and uh, the only the only thing I saw in our room that was broken. If you looked over there by the couch, yep. the little wind, light fixture, the light fixture, you can yes. tell that a piece of the glass got broke off. Right, but you had to be paying attention. Right. And I kind of do, and you do too, because we look around to make sure of what's what so we don't get accused of breaking something. Correct. But, yeah, I noticed that too, and it wasn't sharp where somebody could get hurt or anything no. like that. So I understood why they just didn't worry about it. No. Uh, but but it was it was a nice little setup considering what we had. Considering what we had. Um, the But, I mean, it was it what I expected? No. Was it? Uh, was, was it, I, it was better than I expected. It was it better than you yeah, expected. You know me though; I was afraid to be really claustrophobic. I, I would have, I would have preferred it to be slightly larger, because I am a large person. Well, the goal is that we are not as large next time. <laughs> Which brings us to, um, what was the average weight? Two pounds. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Per day, Justin and Wendy told us that research says that. Each person on a cruise gains an average of two pounds a day. Well, when you figure we were going to have a four-day cruise, we're all going, no, that's eight pounds. That's yeah. not good. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, full disclosure, and I'm, I'm not ashamed of this, by the way, before I start repeating. <laughs> I decided before we went on our cruise to simply uh, weigh myself and then weigh myself when I got back. And when the math broke down, I ended up gaining 10 pounds. And I had gained four, which I crazy. thought I had gained ten. So I was very pleased and with Justin mine. Justin gained two. I know. He's such a he jerk. Goes, but I worked out. Yeah, he it's did like, go work out. That's true. It's like, oh, fine. Rub it in my face, why don't you? Yeah, we decided that <laughs> we didn't want to. So <laughs> I'm on vacation. I don't know. Because we're on vacation. <laughs> 
So now let's talk briefly about the way they organized certain events and, and like for our um, uh, excursion and things like that. I'm very much about being organized and structured. And mm. with large environments like that, with a large number of people, you have to be incredibly organized. I felt they did okay in a lot of areas, but I think they failed in a couple that they could really improve in. The first one I think of is when the day we were um, docking at Cozumel, Mm -hmm. and we knew we had to wait until they, what was it called, the, I want to call it the gangplank. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they lower the gangplank. gangplank. They couldn't get it to extend like it was supposed to. So, okay, let me back up. We weren't sure what we were doing because it had never been told to us. The only things we did know about it, thankfully we knew a little bit, was from Justin and Wendy and Sean and Jen. Mm-hmm. So we headed down to the first floor because that much we knew is that you went out on the first floor. The elevator opens. First deck. At first deck. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator opens and we get corrected and we get sent back up and told to go to the fourth floor until there's an announcement. Okay. Now, and not only did we get corrected and told us what we were, what we were, we were down there at a, an appropriate time, but sh- the person was rude. They were angry. They were very and angry. It's we like, had not – the whole. Keep in mind, we've been on there a couple of days and never seen a rude person. No. Not the workers. The workers are professionals. Mm. They are good to you through everything. Yeah. And we had not seen that. So that really turned us off right off the bat that she yelled at us. Right. And it wasn't just us. It was a elevator full of people. Yeah. And she just scolded us like we were little children and said, get back up to the fourth deck and stay We're there. Not ready we will make you. an announcement. We are not ready for you. Mm-hmm. When all she had to do is say, I'm so sorry, folks. It's not time yet. If you can go back up to the fourth deck, we will make an announcement. And we would have all went without any problem. We still went without any problem. <laughs> but yeah. we were a little annoyed at this point. Yeah. Kind of turned off, weren't we? But I am an obedient. And so are you. <laughs> we go up to the it fourth wasn't floor. Easy. <laughs> you go to get his coffees because we, well, yeah, not coffee husband. for me, but. I got coffee. Tea for me and and coffee for him. Thinking it'll give us something to do for the next few minutes. So I'm sitting there waiting, and I'm thinking, I need to listen for the announcement. So I kept listening, kept listening. Yeah, we both were. Right. And um, they came across and made an announcement. Right. In Spanish. (laughs) And that was it. No other announcements. No other announcements saying, hey, guys, it's ready to get out of here. Keeping in mind that our excursion, the the bus we were supposed to meet, was supposed to leave at 9 o'clock. We look at our... Um, clocks and it says 845 and we're still sitting on the ship with no announcement so we headed for the elevator thinking we've got to find somebody and ask them what to do and we ran into a lady and we told her our excursion's leaving in 15 minutes she goes well everybody's getting off the ship yeah it was the same woman too it was it was the same oh woman. my goodness i yeah. did not even recognize that that makes me twice as frustrated <laughs> yeah, so I we're thought you frustrated knew. at this point and we're thinking are you? and i just turned and i said we were told there would be an announcement, and there wasn't one except for in Spanish. Mm-hmm. And she didn't say nothing. No, she never <laughs> responded to that at all. And we headed down, and we, on the way, we're looking for towels because we're supposed to be able to get a towel, just scan our sea pass. Which they were very unclear about. They were where very unclear about that. We heard one announcement about towels, and we only caught part of it. Yeah. So we didn't know exactly where they were, but we had been told through the grapevine that we could get them on our way off the ship. On port. Right. So we're looking for towel place, no towels. We no. find out after we're off the ship that we were supposed to get them on deck nine or deck two. Two. Mm-hmm. So now, which I'm thinking to myself, why not have it on deck one when people are walking out the door? Right, or like the or like the ship right across from us that was on Harmony the same the yeah. part of the dock mm-hmm. that was Royal Caribbean. Also, right, they had a stand out there set up. With nice big fluffy towels that you walk by and you just check one out. Right. I yeah. don't get why they didn't just do that also. I don't but know. anyway, long story short. A lot of disorganization going on. And lack of communication. And lack of communication, yeah. Lack of communication, lack of communication. So that was a problem we had. And then we had a couple of other little things. Um, 
Can you think of one? I know of one, but I didn't want to do all the talking. Well, it, the communication falls in line with the app. The app. That oh they, goodness! Okay, yeah. so if you guys had listened to our previous episodes, you're going to find out that we have downloaded the app and we were real anxious to use it. Supposedly, uh, they have something called a cruise compass that they you can find in your stateroom every single day, and it tells you all the activities, the times, and things you can do, and what to look forward to doing. Who's the next performing? Day. Who's who? performing? Yeah, yeah, little descriptions under each one. It's like a TV guide, and make a long story short, the app was supposed to replace some of that. And they still had the cruise compass, but we were wanting to use the app. Well, neither one of them was telling us the truth, it seemed like. It seemed like compass did not work properly. It kept on telling us things that that didn't come. Uh, like inter- inaccurate times. And yeah, stuff. inaccurate mm-hmm. times, locations. It was telling us that the, the Spotlight Lounge had karaoke. Well, no, there was no karaoke. Yeah, as far as I know, nothing happened in the Spotlight Lounge the whole time we were there. And it was it was just weirdness. And then on top of that, um, not only did the, uh, the app uh, tell you misinformation, but it really, it really was good about keeping your bill. On there, you can see your uh, yeah, bill okay. really so, well on there. So the right? negative is you got misinformation about everything fun to do there, but when it came to bill time, it was incredibly accurate. It was That's incredibly the positive. Incredibly accurate. So that was helpful. They got that figured out. <laughs> I bet know? they do. <laughs> but you know, we just got to where we asked a lot of questions and everything, and that helps. But it was it was a little frustrating with the app, and so oh, we were and they kept to, on dropping out the Wi-Fi. Oh yeah. Okay, how many times did I try to get back on? I just finally quit looking. I can't count how many it, times it, I, I tried. was just done. Uh, but the other thing that we ran into was when we were disembarking, mm-hmm. and um, we were in line, and I mean, you were almost to the person you were supposed to check out with. And then they're telling you you need your C-Pass. Guys, we had ours out already. If we wouldn't have known about it through our friends, we might have had it in our luggage. We might have had it in a checked bag that we couldn't even get to anymore. Right. They should be making sure their their, their, um, customers are informed. So that they're there. There you go, guests. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah. They're better informed so that it runs more smoothly. Yeah, because, I mean, that line was crazy long. Oh, yeah, it was wrapped all the way around the deck. It, <laughs> it was really insane. did. That's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> I mean, that's very accurate. I mean, it went all the way around the ship. I don't know if this is anything you'll keep, but I still get a kick out of the guy on the phone going, Are you in line? He's talking to somebody in his party. Are you in line? The line. Well, come upstairs to the fourth <laughs> yeah. floor, or what floor was it? Is it four? Five. Come up to the fifth deck, mm-hmm. get off that elevator, and get get in that big A line. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he was not happy. And, and he's having to yell because it was loud. And all the people in line near him were going, yep, he's got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But it was. It was a huge line. Now, that being said, we probably stood there probably 15, 20 minutes. But once it started moving, we moved. But we'll talk more about that. That's right. Anyway, so organization, communication, communication, communication. They lacked a lot of communication. They struggled. Even the mustard drill was insanely a Oh, I forgot about joke. the mustard drill. Okay, the mustard drill. Just to prepare everyone. <sighs> Our friends were blown away by it because they had had them in the past in the auditorium in the air conditioning. They've never had it that bad before. They made us do it out on deck. Guys, it was in the 90s, and the mm-hmm. humidity in Galveston is... Sick, and we were shoulder to shoulder with other people. I will post that picture at some point. Um, yeah, I I didn't want to get people's faces in it and stuff because you know we don't know what will get there and if anybody get upset. But I I just pointed my phone down and took pictures of legs before we started. Right to kind of give you an idea how close we were standing. It was ridiculously close. I kept having a guy behind me over my – well, he was behind me because I turned my back to him to face Steve because he was making me very uncomfortable. But he had been drinking heavily already. <laughs> yeah, and he was loud. And we couldn't hear anything that people were saying that, that was organizing the, yep. the mustard drill. Mustard drill. The mustard drill. And then on top of that, we were told that people sometimes arrive late or forget about it or don't bother to come. And we had to wait there probably another 30 minutes or more. To, for them to get those stinking Just people where they're to get supposed those to be. Up there. Don't be that person. Because everybody uh, there wanted to throw him overship. Oh, man. Overboard. But, yeah. uh, He was loud. uh, He was, and he did that for like two days. And And then finally he kind of disappeared. Yeah, we're thinking (laughs) either he ran out of money on the drinking and stuff or. That someone told him, it's like, no more drinks for you. Yeah, because he was a handful. But, um, and he made friends, so it made it twice as fun. But, (laughs) anyway, the mustard drill, it's a necessary 
evil. Yeah, it's it a maritime is, law. You yes, have to go through it. No choice. They have no choice. You have no choice. And guess what? They want you to take it seriously because emergencies happen. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so now. And now we're going to talk about service. Was the, the oh, it was I'd amazing. say exceptional. Um, and we're not in, we're not accustomed to being pampered either. No, I'm not accustomed to being sitting down in a dining room and having somebody take my napkin and lay it nicely in my lap and then hand no. me my no. menu. I'm used to it all being laid on the table, including the menu. Right. Okay, I have to tell about Jenner. 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 G e n e r. He was so fun. He we had steak one night. <laughs> he actually saw that Steve and I both have a tremor. Which is a weird thing, but that's a whole nother story. But he saw us shaking. He comes over and he goes, oh, I'll just cut that for you. So he cut our steaks up for us in yeah. tiny little bite sizes. <laughs> there he is. I see you shaking. Let me help you with that. Yes, like, let like, me make that easy. And, I mean, it was odd, but it was kind of fun. And they yeah. are great. If, if, for instance, if Steve would have liked that steak and wanted more, he could ask for more. Oh, yeah. And they would have just brought it to him. He did that with a soup they served. <laughs> okay. What was the name of that soup? Roasted poblano pepper. Oh my goodness, that thing was so good. <laughs> it's like oh, crack. I go. I must have the recipe. Give me the recipe now. But these guys are exceptional. They keep your cup full. They take care of you constantly. Now, the only thing that I, I found, even remotely, just small, and it's a very small thing about uh, the my time dining at the My Fair Lady on the Enchantment of the Seas. For rural Caribbean is the fact that the amount of gap that is in between the the different. It takes a long time to get your courses. Yeah, courses in between courses. They do. They give you some real. Um, they bring you something, then it's quite a while before they bring the next thing out. Mm-hmm. But if you're just wanting to relax, it's the way to go. And by the way, you don't have to order every course on the menu. No. Just go in there and order a dessert if you want to, or get an appetizer or two. Mm-hmm. I one night got escargot and shrimp cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, they were both really good. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they really were. We enjoyed ourselves. The The food we thought was uh, ex- extremely good. It was very, it was very good. good food. Even though Sean said, he goes, I've had better. The thing about Sean is uh, what he does is he kind of makes me step outside myself. And I go, am I liking it because of the atmosphere? Am I liking it because it is a truly good? Are you liking it because they baby us? Yeah. You and know, work, and they work hard. Yeah, right. I think that's a fair thing. Uh, um, I think I think I liked it because the food was good. I have never had a lot of the food that they were serving in that evening, and I did enjoy the service. I agree. I agree completely. Something else that's worth mentioning is there are restaurants on there that you pay for. Oh yeah, separate from what is complimentary going with your package. Oh, yeah. Check into those before you go because they may be worth it to you. We did one. We went to Chops. Yeah, that was it's an normal, interesting thing. Yeah, it's normally forty dollars a person. We got it for twenty five a person, and the whole group went. That was eleven of us, and we were all at one big table, which I appreciated because they usually, in most cases, had been going. Well, we're not sure if we can put you all together. These guys, they were determined to put us all they together. They were really determined. So we were sent just to let you know how this happened. Chops Grill. We did plan on going on the second night there or second day for lunch. Right, because then we would spend like thirty one dollars per person. Right, we thought that was going to be the good deal. But if you, but the serving and the way they serve is different from the evening crowd to the the lunch crowd, and so um, w- the fact that we were able to get in on the dinner crowd was really really good. Oh yeah, that was huge because if you go for lunch, the menus cut down. There's yeah. not as much offered. Right, and and since we went for the dinner. We got everything offered to us that was available. The the full menu. And the other thing is, is we were standing – or not standing. We were sitting there at the uh, the port waiting right. to board the ship. And they have – just to let you know, if you ever decide to do this, they have these people that walk around with menus and also a schedule. And they say, we would like to schedule you for uh, a time at Chop's Grill. And if you schedule now, we will save you X amount. Well, right. This guy walked up to us and he goes, yeah, I'll give it to you for $25. Well, there's going to be 11 of us. I'll give you all $25 a right. piece like that. And, and and when I told Justin about it, he goes, that is a really good deal. Right. Everybody was really excited about it. And, and the neat thing was he immediately gave us a reservation. Mm-hmm. And he gave us his card with his name. And he yeah. said, if you have to cancel, just call this number and ask for me. Frisco. I still remember his name. Oh, is that what his name was? Yeah. Very cool. But uh, it was a neat way to go. Now, that being said, it – if you're somebody that don't want people bothering you, it might bug you a little bit because they do keep asking you to do different things around there. They're all about 
it's a sales. Sales, sales, yeah. sales, 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 sales. That's all they do. It, it, whether it's a tour of some part of the ship or whether it's um, doing the sushi class or whether it oh, is that was fun. folding napkins or, I mean, I'm, they have all kinds of classes and tours and stuff like that. I'm starting to wonder if this is not going to be a two-part series. I know. It's so long. Um, because, there, I mean, we I mean we still haven't talked about the sushi class. and We're running in like in 30 minutes. Well, here. we could go ahead and talk about, since we're getting ready to get there anyway, talk about all of Cosmel because I thought it was an episode of his own. Yeah. So let's just talk about it. You could split it however you want to. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's let's split it now. Like let's, Okay, let's finish up this part then and and we'll summarize. Right. The food in chops was really good. Something else I think that is worth mentioning is you accidentally ordered your steak cooked too rare. Yeah. And it was your error and you recognized that you even told her it was your error. Mm-hmm. She took it back and brought him a brand new steak cooked the way he wanted it. Right. No extra charge. Right. I mean, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, and, and and the cool thing also is is you can actually, they'll bring you sides, they'll bring you all of the sides, and then everybody at the table gets to share the sides. Right, it's sort of family style, I think family is what style. they called mm-hmm. called it. And the neat thing about these restaurants is you don't pay per item, you pay a cover charge. Right. So when you go in there, if you like, like what I liked in the dining room, I tried the escargot. If I would have wanted to, I could have kept ordering escargot till I was sick. Yeah. And they would have brought it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted it. Yep. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's really awesome. Dangerous. <laughs> that one night when we all ate in the, um, my fair lady dining room together mm-hmm. and the desserts. How many stinking desserts do you and Tia eat? I think we ate three desserts, three separate styles of desserts. It was crazy because she's like, okay, I want that. And you were doing the <laughs> same thing. It was so funny. And I tasted each one of them, but I was like, you guys are crazy. Yeah. But yeah. it's really neat because you get the opportunity to try things you've never tried before. You'd never be able to try any of these things. And and um, and they were free. They're complimentary. It comes with I started to say it's not cruise. free. It's complimentary. It's complimentary. Sorry. I paid for all these things except I can have as much as so I want. So, by gosh, eat till you're sick. And I done did. Oh Ten pounds gosh. worth <laughs> of made myself it sick. It was insane, but it was fun. Yeah, it was. And um, so, I mean <sighs> – Windjammer was also the other oh, yeah. ship on there. And that- they had a huge amount of food. They even had a section that was Indian food, mm-hmm. which was really interesting to me. I don't like spicy things, and they tend to have spicier foods. Yeah. I so tr- I didn't try it, but you did try one. I tried the lamb curry is right. what I tried, and, and you, I did it, not like yeah, it. Yeah, it didn't work for you. But, I mean, I've liked the opportunity to try other foods, you know, I just the same way. it gave me the shivers. But, <laughs> but it's really it handy. really did. But it's really handy if you're eating a certain way, yeah. like if you're dieting or you have a special dietary need. It's mm-hmm. handy because you can go and you can look at that and say, I can have this or this or this, but not this. And you just get what you want. Right. They had, what, about eight different cakes? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. They had a lot more than eight different cakes. Oh, really? You yeah. think so? I think they had at least 10 different cakes, maybe, maybe 12. Maybe 10 or 12. But, it, they were beautiful. <laughs> but they also the thing is, is what I like about Windjammer is if we still had kids or if we ever decided that we were going to take grandkids on the cruise with us, it gave you everything that a kid want and a lot more. When the My Fair Lady, they didn't have a kid's menu. They no. did not have a kid. The Windjammer, you had like uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken nuggets, fries, Right. I pizza. would never, if it were me, never take a small child into My Fair Lady. No. Maybe if all you wanted was an appetizer and dessert, but it's too long. Kids don't experiment. They, they want something familiar. Well, they, they can't sit there that long. No, and it was drawn out. It's it's hard. I mean, it's really hard on a kid to sit there for an hour and a right. half to two hours yeah. eating food. It is. I mean, it's healthy to eat that way because you are supposed to gradually get filled up and not gorge yourself. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's just really hard for a kid. Yeah. But the Windjammer was nice. It was kept pretty clean also. They did a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, it was more casual. You saw a lot more of... The ocean, that's for sure. Well, I'm talking people, though. You saw uh, a lot more parents with small children. You that saw a lot more college students. It got pretty loud in there at times. Yeah. And young people. But, I got mean... Got people coming... Because it was run on pool... It was, a, it was on deck nine, wasn't it? Yeah, on the pool level. On the pool level. So you had people coming fresh out of the pool. Yeah, they were in. sopping wet and walking in, sitting down and eating. Yep. But we, we liked the food. I mean, I had mm-hmm. nothing against it. I preferred My Fair Lady. Me too. But it was... I didn't have anything against it, though. But, yeah, the, we were 
we were basically satisfied and happy though. Yeah. We spent a lot of time eating. <laughs> we did. We really did. Hence the ten pounds. Yeah, four. Um, more than I wanted. So So I mean, okay, well so uh, we still have to cover Cozumel and our excursion it's package clear. to Plymouth. It's very clear we need another episode. It is. And we still have to discuss our um refreshments package. And our onboard activities and shows and yeah. ga- like shows and games and stuff, talking about different places we took photos and whether or not we'll cruise again. Yeah. So I'm sure we're going to do another episode. Um, let's see. What all did we talk about this time? We talked about the condition of the ship when we right. A lot of the things that we we misunderstood or had uh, different expectations. That's Our what misconce- I'm trying to say. What was it? Mis- misconceptions. Misconceptions. Big words. Um, <laughs> the boarding process and disembarkation. We talked about that and our cabin size. And you and I ended up on two opposite ends of the fence on that one, yeah. which was really interesting. And then we talked about organization and communication issues Yeah, <laughs> and wrapped it up with food. You yeah. know, of course we wrapped it up with food. So I think we could probably wrap this up for right now. I think you're right. And then what we'll do is, like, uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, our, our ex- uh, excursion uh, in, in some detail. And we also talk about... Uh, what else did we say? Oh, um, some of the activities that we had on board and that were available that we chose to do and decided not to do or things that we missed. And uh, maybe out of that list of those shows, maybe that might be something that you might be interested in. It's like, you know what? I want to go just for that activity alone. That would be fun stuff, um, yeah. The in- photo opportunities, panoramic, sce- panoramic sceneries. I'm talking in nonsense. <laughs> I do that. Hey, Steve. This has been a fantastic episode. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode number... 91. The one about first cruise eye-openers. Part one. Oh, part one. (laughs) It's like, this is part one, right? Two Tenderfoot Tourists is a weekly family-friendly podcast. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe to Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. That's just naming a few. To get in touch with us and chat about this podcast or even your travel experiences... Simply email us at tenderfoottourist at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Keep those suggestions coming and maybe you'll give us our best episode of 2019. I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. Until next time, stay tender. Stay tender.